Some Inner Fury by Kamala Markandeya Characters Summary Analysis Hello and welcome to the discourse Kamala Markandeya was a post independence novelist known for the society and self seen spiritual quest modernism attitude toward feminine superiority east west encounter the conflict between tradition and prevailing modernism and somewhat historical attitudes her second novel was Some Inner Fury which was published in the year 1955 like her first novel Nectar in Sieve her second novel is presented in the manner of first person narrative Some Inner Fury is a novel that deals with political passions prevailing over love and justice the clash between passion and patriotism is presented in the novel the title some inner fury is suggestive of indian passion for independence and the resentment of indian folks against the oppressive british government culture and society some inner fury is a feministic novel that explores the political upheaval and cultural turmoils that engulfed the nation during the last leg of the freedom struggle of india in the 1940s The novel depicts the clash between the western idea of individualism and the indian idea of society above self. Another important theme of the story is love and marriage. While love is depicted as the marriage of two hearts, marriage without love is shown as psychological torture. Characters of some inner fury. Meera is the main character of the novel and is also the narrator of the story. She is a well-educated modern girl of 17 belonging to a rich indian family. She is a mentally liberated woman who can see above caste, creed and race. Roshan is another female character who too belongs to a rich Indian family. She got her education from Oxford University and then she returned to India to devote herself to the cause of freedom of India. She runs a pro-Indian newspaper and tries to help Indian folks struggling for independence. Roshan is a modern and progressive woman who becomes an ideal for Meera and tries to follow her. Prem Lal is the third female character who too belongs to a rich Indian family but she is traditional and rooted in Indian culture. Another important female character is the mother of Meera who is a traditional wise woman. Kit Sami is the elder brother of Meera who is an anglophile. After completing his education at Oxford University he too returns to India but unlike Roshan he prefers to join the civil services as an employee of the British Indian government. Kit Sami was in unrequited love with a British girl Sylvia but his feelings didn't reach fruition. Back in India he gets married to Premla whose nature is exactly opposite to Kit Sami. While Premla is a traditional woman who takes pride in Indian culture, Kit Sami loves British culture and believes Indian culture is primitive. Govind is the foster brother of Kit Sami and Meera who was adopted by Meera's parents. Meera's father wished Govind to join his business after his education but Govind chose the path of revolutionaries struggling for the independence of India through violent means. Govind hates the British and those who work for the British government yet he loves his family including Kit Sami. Govind starts liking Premla who he knows is being badly treated by Kit Sami. Richard is another important character who is a college friend of Roshan and Kit Sami. After graduation, he comes to India with Kit Sami and Roshan and takes the job of governor's ADC. Richard is a British modern man who falls in love with Meera, an Indian girl. Meera too loves him deeply and wishes to marry him. Hike is another British man who works for an English missionary who is involved in tempting the naive and innocent Indians into the garb of Christianity. The novel is set in the 1940s during the period of the Quit India movement. The whole of native Indian society is engulfed in the emotions for independence while some are supportive of the violent means of Subhas Chandra Bose and others are supportive of the peaceful yet revolutionary ways of Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. Despite this difference a sense of resentment is common in all Indians against the oppressive foreign government. The story begins as Meera sentimentally opens the beautiful silver box engraved with filigree work and gazes at the bit of material covered with dust and blood stains and her eyes begin to get misty blood stains are of the man whom she loved so much and then decided to be with the man who almost murdered him she just saw richard brutally beaten in the mob fury as her heart cries her mind drifts into the memories while she realizes that individual fall or suffering is irrelevant in the event of great cause 
Summary of some inner fury. Kit Sami is the eldest son of a rich Indian family in a provincial town. His family is partially westernized and partially traditional. He just returned from London after completing his education at Oxford University and along with him he brought an English friend and named Richard. Meera is the younger sister of Kit Sami who is just 17 years old. She is a modern girl with a liberated heart. She is very open-minded and forward in her manners. Richard is attracted to her and she develops an intimacy with him. Within a few days, Richard and Meera feel that they are made for each other. After some days, Richard leaves Kit Sami's house and goes to the capital city to join his assignment as the governor's ADC. Meanwhile, Roshan, another friend of and classmate of Kit Sami, decides to begin a newspaper supporting the Indian cause and struggle for independence. She is an independent lady who, though is westernized, understands the importance of Indian society and culture. She is a liberated progressive woman who decides to devote herself to the social cause. Though she is unmarried, she claims that she is married and she and her husband parted ways. Kit Sami too joins the civil services and becomes the district magistrate of his city. He is a completely westernized and anglophile Indian man who fell in love with a British girl but couldn't marry her. Now when he is well settled, his family decides to marry him to an Indian girl Premla. Kit Sami opposes the marriage because he doesn't know Premla well but ultimately they get married. Premla is an Indian girl who observes the Hindu rituals of society. Unfortunately, Kit Sami fails to understand the Indian traditional and cultural woman. He tries to westernize her. Kit Sami likes playing tennis but Premla does not. He asks her to put on shorts which she does not like. She prizes honesty which for Kit Sami signifies nothing. Her desire for playing on Veena is in contrast with Kit Sami's lack of interest in classical music. She knows Gita which, which Kit Sami has forgotten. Their natures are opposed to each other. After his initial trials, he decides to maintain a distance from Premla, his own wife. Premla tries her best to win the love of Kit Sami, but she fails and gradually her love is subdued and is ultimately sublimated to the social cause. When she becomes a helping partner of an English missionary, Hike, in maintaining a school in a village, she adopts an orphan child from the school. Though Kit Sami has no objection to Premla going out and working for social causes, he is suspicious of the missionary as he knows how it tempts gentle and benevolent men and women towards Christianity. Govin, who is the foster brother of Meera and Kit, Kit Sami, refuses to join his foster father's business. He is fired with nationalist fervor and wants to play an active role in the independence movement. He joins the civil disobedience movement and becomes a votary of violence. Meanwhile, Meera is restless as she wonders when she will get another chance to meet Richard, her lover. She decides to join Roshan's newspaper as a reporter. Roshan publishes her newspaper with nationalistic zeal. Roshan is a modern, independent woman who values individualism. However, she also recognizes her duty towards her society and actively participates in the political movement for Indian independence. Govind meets with Roshan and makes her aware of his policy of freedom. Roshan is sympathetic towards Govind but she doesn't agree with him and says everybody is interested in freedom only we do not all agree on the means to the end as I think you know too. She further says, there is no power in violence, only destruction. I am not really interested in destruction. However, when Govind gets caught while trying to burn a pro-British government newspaper office, Roshan comes to his rescue. Govind learns that all is not well between his brother Kit Sami and his wife. He learns that Premla has started going to educate orphan children at a missionary school. Being a pro-Indian traditional man, Govind starts liking Premla and develops a great respect for her. But he tries to convince her to maintain a distance from other activities of the missionary where she goes to teach orphan kids. Roshan asks Meera to report on a peasant resettlement in the neighborhood of the city. It is in the course of the visits to the resettlement that she stumbles on Richard and the love affair between the two develops. Indian situations prove harsh for Richard and he falls ill. 
He takes a six week leave from his job and decides to visit the southernmost part of India. Meera is worried about him and when he asks her to accompany him to Kanyakumari, she decides to go with him. The trip turns out to be their honeymoon as they consummate their love yet unmarried. After six weeks, they return with dreams of marriage. Richard decides to meet Meera's parents to ask for Meera's hand in marriage. Meera's mother is a traditional woman who is aware of the current times and the tumultuous times ahead shortly. She realizes her daughter's rebellious behavior and instead of directly opposing Meera's relationship with Richard, she insists that Meera is still a child and they should wait till Meera turns 21 years old. She is a mother who loves her daughter and promises Meera that if Richard decides to return to England before she turns 21, she will not oppose their marriage. One day, there is an official party at the government house where Kit is expected to visit Premla, his wife. However, it is the same day when the new building of the missionary school is going to be inaugurated. Premla prefers to go to missionary school, so Kit Sammy takes Meera to the party. Meanwhile, the local youth groups are preparing to revolt against the ill practices of Hikes missionary as they believe that the missionary is involved with the conversion of Hindus to Christianity either through force or through temptations. Some of the members of these groups are friends of Govind. Govind comes to know that the revolutionary is going to target the missionary school and he gets worried for Premla. He goes to the government house to ask Kit Sami about Premla. The party is being held under tight security because it is feared that the hostile public and revolutionaries may disrupt the party. While the party is going on, the light goes off and the people rush into the ball. A melee results, Govind also rushes in the inn and asks Kit Sami where Premla is. Kit Sami tells him that Premla has gone to the school in the village. Govind gets worried and insists Kit Sami immediately go to the village and take Premla to safety. Kit Sami understands the emergency of the situation. Despite his distance from Premla, he feels responsible for her and decides to immediately go there. Meera and Govind co accompany him in his official car. When they reach the village, they find that the newly built school building has already been burnt down by the revolutionaries and that Premla was inside the building. Govind tries to jump in the fire to save Premla, but Meera grabs him in her arms. Meanwhile, Kit Sami notices that some of the revolutionaries who were running away are friends of Govind. He confronts them and abuses them, but suddenly a knife is thrown at him which kills him. Soon the police arrive and Govind is arrested along with other revolutionaries. At the court, Hike gives his testimony against Govind and says that he saw Govind throwing the knife at Kit Sami. Meera opposes his testimony and tells the court that she had thrown her arms around Govind as Kit Sami left, so Govind couldn't have thrown the knife. Richard, being the ADC of the governor, is also present at the court and he is very sad about his friend's death. The native people do not believe that court will offer justice. While the trial is proceeding, the court is mobbed by the slogan shouting mob and Govind is taken away. Meera also realizes that she can keep herself no longer from her countrymen and goes with them. Richard believes that Haki is telling the truth and hence he tries to stop the mob from taking away Govind by force. The mob turns furious and Haki and Richard are murdered in the ensuing violence. Meera sees all this happening and her heart cries for Richard, but she prefers to be with her countrymen by her own will. She learns the new meaning of individual liberty and duty towards society. She learns that personal losses do not count for a noble cause. While Richard represents the alien rule over Indians, the violent protest by Govind represents the feelings of the freedom fighters. The peaceful element of protest is evident in Premla, Meera and Roshan. So this is it for today. We will continue to discuss the history of Indian English literature. Please stay connected with the discourse. Thanks and regards.